It's Tim Walls. It's always been Tim Walls. Even though most of us did not know really who he was until like the last two weeks. I mean, the man called some Republican politicians weird on TV and he went from a virtual unknown outside of Minnesota to the Dem VP nominee. With Kamala Harris officially announcing that her VP pick is yes, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls this morning. Right, and so let's talk about who the hell is this guy? Well, for one thing, he has a super different background and appeal from Harris, which is really the whole point here. He's a 60 year old governor who was born and raised in rural Nebraska, joined the Army National Guard after high school and served for 24 years. Then after that, he went to college, got a teaching degree, and then moved with his wife to her home state of Minnesota, where he worked as a high school teacher and a football coach for about a decade before he decided to run for office. With him in 2006, winning his race to represent Minnesota's rural first district, successfully flipping it from red to blue. While in Congress, Walls was largely regarded as a moderate Democrat, with it being known during that time for a number of things, including his support of gun rights, earning him actually backing from the NRA. But then notably, after winning re-election for his seat five more times, Walls decided to run for governor in the 2018 race. And from that point on, he started to shift to the left, with him becoming increasingly more progressive on a number of issues, including gun rights. With him even saying that his then 17-year-old daughter pleaded with him to do more to prevent gun violence after the Parkland shooting. And so actually, while on the campaign trail, he donated all the money he had ever gotten from the NRA to charity, and he started pushing for some gun control measures like background checks and getting rid of reciprocal carry agreements between states. And while he now supports some restrictions, Walls himself is still a gun owner who hunts birds and is proud of it. But then also, beyond guns, his progressive shift expanded to plenty of other issues as well after winning the race for governor. With Vice President Harris even noting many of the progressive policies that he's enacted since taking office in our post announcing it. With that including tax cuts for working families, setting paid family and medical leave requirements, and making Minnesota the first state to pass a law providing constitutional abortion protections after Roe was overturned. But then also, beyond what Harris listed, Walls has enacted a number of other high-profile progressive policies. With this including providing free college tuition for low-income students and free meals for school children, legalizing recreational marijuana, and creating protections for trans folks. He's also championed environmental policies, with the New York Times even describing him as one of the nation's most forceful advocates for tackling climate change. But again, what's really wild is how quickly he has blown up, right? Because he has gained a lot of national attention in recent weeks, largely due to numerous mainstream cable news appearances that have gone viral. With him specifically there, getting traction and centering himself prominently in the national discourse by repeatedly calling Trump, Vance, and other Republican politicians weird. We do not like what has happened where we can't even go to Thanksgiving dinner with our uncle because you end up in some weird fight that is unnecessary. <laughs> and, and I think yeah. bringing back people together, well, it's true, these guys are just it weird. Is. And, and it it's, is. you know, they're, they're running for He-Man Women Haters Club or something. These are weird people on the other side. They wanna take <laughs> books away. They wanna be in your exam room. That's that's what it comes down to. And don't, you know, get sugarcoating this. These are weird ideas. Listen to them speak. They're awkward and, and it stems from Who's asking for this crazy stuff? Who's asking to raise the price of insulin? Who's asking to get rid of birth control? They do these focus groups or whatever. Who's sitting in a bar in Racine, you know, Wisconsin saying, you know what we really need? We need to ban Animal Farm. Nobody is. They're talking about real things. These guys are just weird. That's who they are. So it ain't it isn't much else. Don't give them the power. Look, are they a threat to democracy? Yes. Are they going to take our rights away? Yes. Are they going to put people's lives in danger? Yes. Are they going to endanger the planet by not dealing with climate change? Yes, they're going to do all that. But don't lift these guys up like they're sometimes the heroes. The fascists depend on fear. The fascists depend on us going back. But we're not afraid of weird people. We, we're a little bit creeped out, but we're not afraid. You know, that viral appeal, it absolutely slingshotted walls into the public eye and the VP pick. I mean, he's got this certain charisma that a lot of politicians lack. He has a kind of accessibility to him. He explains things fantastically. I think a lot of Democrats, when they're talking about policy or they're trying to defend something, they, they emit something that's a bit like a, a word soup fucked at the thesaurus. And it feels like he's got this down to earth, likable, relatable thing going. You know, as far as wider net appeal, he's a vet, a gun owner, a former teacher. He's the first Democratic VP pick since fucking 1964 that hasn't gone to law school. He's got a long record as a moderate, but he's also implemented sweeping progressive policies. And notably, he's able to speak and defend those policies in a way that I think most people understand. What a monster kids are Eating, eating and having full bellies so they can go learn, and women are making their own healthcare decisions. Right, so while he's not staunchly in the middle of the road and from a swing state like most of Harris's other top contenders, the idea here is that he will actually appeal to more voters in more states. Right, you know, rather than just targeting one key state with a more zeroed-in pick who might not have as much appeal in other key states. Which, you know, definitely 
was one of the big appeals of a Josh Shapiro as VP. It's widely believed that the road to the White House could be paved through Pennsylvania. But also with while specifically while Minnesota might not be a key state, other Midwestern states like Michigan and Wisconsin absolutely are. And there are many that believe that Walz's Midwestern roots and Big Ten platform will help the campaign a lot in those battlegrounds. You know, that's definitely something that we've seen reflected in a lot of responses from a ton of people across the political spectrum who have cheered Walz's selection. Or you've got Nancy Pelosi characterizing Walz as right down the middle, calling him a heartland of America Democrat. But that also echoed by other moderates, including many who were top contenders to be Harris's VP and who applauded the selection. With some like Pete Buttigieg, notably highlighting Walz's Midwestern voice. But then also equally important, there we saw a ton of progressives rallying behind the pick, like Representative Ilhan Omar, who represents Minnesota as well as AOC, tweeting, Vice President Harris made an excellent decision in Gov Walls as her running mate. Together, they will govern effectively, inclusively, and boldly for the American people. They won't back down under tight odds either, from healthcare to school lunch. Let's do this. We also saw some anti-Trump Republicans applauding Walls' selection. But then, of course, on the other side, we saw most conservatives railing against Walls, with many of them, including Trump's campaign, painting him as far left, with a campaign spokesperson calling Walls a dangerously liberal extremist who is obsessed with spreading California's dangerously liberal agenda far and wide and only pretends to support Americans in the heartland. You also had Ron DeSantis making a similar claim, calling the Harris-Walls combo the most left-wing ticket in American history. Also with that, going on to say that Minnesota was ground zero for the BLM riots of 2020. And that's definitely something that we've seen a lot of other Republicans seizing on. With them arguing that he didn't respond fast or strong enough to the riots that broke out in Minnesota following the police murder of George Floyd. Which, you know, is also something that J.D. Vance has already seized on, saying at a rally in Pennsylvania today that Walls is a radical who let rioters burn down Minneapolis. But hey, with all that said, another milestone is down. VP pick has officially been announced. We have the Democratic National Convention coming up and you know, we are what, 90 days away from election day. So yeah, now would be a very good time to double check that you are registered to vote. And if you know you're not, sign up to vote. I'll link to resources down below, but you can also just go to vote.org. You know, be part of the process because one, this is the most important election since the last most important election. Two, there's a lot to vote on. It's not just the presidency. There's a lot of stuff locally that matters. And three, yes, you vote for the change that you wanna see in the world, but also if you lose, you get to complain. And isn't that the most important thing to have the moral high ground so you can be the most whiny bitch version of yourself? I mean, that's how I operate in my life.